Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I basically do a lot of experiments on worm farming. So whether it be different kind of worms, different kind of bins, I have a variety. And today we are going to look in on my 55 gallon blue worm bin. And I will put the specs below as to the size of the bin. But today it has been less than a month since we've been in here and I, I think maybe we might be able to sift some of this. So we're going to do a little sifting first and then uh, get into it. This is my one quarter inch uh, sieve and I'm looking at it here and I am getting some recovery but not a lot. So it might not give us very much in the way of a harvest. I do have some planting to do for the fall, so I was hoping to get a little bit of a stock so that I could add it uh, when it finally cools off a little bit and I put in my fall root crops. Here in zone 5A, we're gonna have a while simply because uh, right now it is 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside. I'll put the Celsius um, in there in the notes and it is 85 degrees in the basement and 70% humidity. So the castings really aren't drying out very well and I'm really not giving them much of a shake in here. Whatever comes out, comes out and that's fine. But I don't wanna turn them into, you know, um, casting balls because those do not dry out very well and tend to be harder to get to a good consistency later. Um, I do sift all of my castings just because I don't want any uh, leftover food to attract uh, critters to any of my bonsais or plants. But I really don't think we're going to get much more than this. And that's, that's enough to do a couple of bonsais, but definitely not enough for the fall. Now even though that was a one quarter inch screen, which is, I, I'll put how many millimeters it is, you can actually see we have a where did it go? There it is. We've got little cat or little cocoons that have managed to make it through. So um, one quarter inch is not good enough to get the cocoons, uh, especially from the blue worms and the red wigglers. Um, some people have asked me, you know, do you go down to the one twelfth inch? And uh, sometimes I do, but you can see how little of recovery there was at a quarter inch. It would be much, much less if I went down to a smaller screen. And for me, this is fine. I think this is, um, this is good for what I am using it for. All right, so let's get in and see what the moisture is like underneath. So all of these here, probably I'll be able to do more with them as soon as they dry out a little bit more but I did steal my second fan from this room uh, to put in with the European Nightcrawlers in their room because they were getting very, very wet. So um, I am just going to do some fluffing. We haven't done any fluffing in here in probably a month and a half. So it is time for me to make sure that I check down low and make sure that it's not getting compacted and super wet. I'm not going to do a lot a lot, but I do want to check. And I just move things over as they become more finished. Um, this part here is probably, you know, six months. But what I have been doing with some of my smaller bins is when they start getting harvested, if they are too wet to sift, I will actually uh, dump them here on top of blue so that the bigger surface area can help those bins dry out more. So this is not all of Blue's castings. These, some of these have been donated from other bins like the Red Wigglers um, and the DIY bin that we harvested right at, I think, a month ago. So some of these castings aren't Blue's, uh, but they are uh, all mixed worm species in this bin, so it doesn't matter which bin I add to it. I'm not adding anything new. The African nightcrawlers stay upstairs. All right, so I am finding that some of this in here is getting a little bit compacted. So you can see right here, 
it doesn't break up very easily and so it is getting a little bit too much uh, I don't know if it's really wet or if it's just the weight is compacting it at this point um, but I think just giving it a couple of turns will you know help out and get this ugh, to dry out all right so we'll keep doing that as we go now we're getting into this middle portion here that's probably closer to three months and I will start you know anything I find that is large in uh, size as far as food that's not done I'll start throwing it down to that end down there what did I find in here something sharp oh peach pit um, so yeah that's still pretty pretty done here as we're getting to the seam so I'll even out this finished part here and then we'll look in on the newer parts of the bin I'll put a picture in I came down here to check on things and actually found a huge bloom of mushrooms not too long ago so let me move you down to the next spot and then we can take a look in on the semi-finished and the newest end of the bin. Hey, if you're liking this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. If you wanna know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, this has been covered up with uh, my little plastic tarp thing to try and uh, make sure that um, no flybys want to uh, get into the bin nothing looks particularly fabulous if you're seeing kind of a really fluffy part here i was sifting soil for my bonsais and i use the um coconut coir but i only use the largest fraction of it so i sift that through my one quarter inch um sieve and then anything that is below the quarter inch um, the grit gets to come in here and also the coconut coir so it gets a little bit of an influx of of stuff from time to time when i'm um, preparing my bonsai soil okay if i remember correctly the last time we looked in on blue this was when we started to really see the uptick in worm population now this was just completely covered in mushrooms um, we still have some, I think these are called ink caps. I don't know why they came in. I use the same moisture as I do every place else, or the same bedding, not moisture, duh. Um, I don't know why I got a bloom of them, but here are, here's the you know, worms working on uh, a little bit of a corn cob there. They do enjoy their corn cobs. But you can see the population is probably tenfold more at this end of the bin than it was when we were looking in on the part at the um the finished end over there but we did not feed blue last time because he had um kind of a kind of a too much food and it had gotten a little bit uh warm somehow or other the either the seeds from a melon or these are wheat berries i'm not sure which um inside this avocado pit so we'll keep looking looks like the uh, the mold has kind of dried things out here so we might have to add moisture this time when we get in there a little bit farther and that is something that I've noticed is that if I do have mold I do see that it gets a little drier here they are getting into that corn cob but I'm gonna just keep breaking up this paper or grain or whatever it is that's uh, seeming to be a little bit dry. Oh, here's a good size worm ball. Good worms. You can see the, the different worms. You can see the blue worms and the red wigglers pretty easily in here. Um, but it looks like the mushroom, I didn't purposely put any mushroom substrate in here, but look at that. That is strange. There must have been some sort of spores in the grain that I fed. Um, to my knowledge, I did not 
put anything in there that would mold. Uh, not like that on purpose. Not that it's bad or anything. I'm just saying that it is unusual for me to find any sort of uh, bloom like that. It's very unusual in my bins. So we're still cranking through it. Still finding things to be quite dry. Um, but since everything over there is kind of wet, I'm hesitant to add any, any more. Okay, we're getting into, there's still some of that grain here and the worms, oh yeah, here we go. Yeah. Got a whole worm ball. Um, I'll put a picture up last time, but they had not moved into this grain last time. Uh, they had uh, stayed pretty much in the pasta feeding that we had gave them before. So that's good. They've started to really, really move into this grain. There's a nice worm ball, European night crawler there. So we're doing good. They're getting into that stuff. They're eating all those mushrooms. So that's good. Kind of pile that up. Make room for today's feeding. Look at all those worms. Yeah, this is um, flour and grain and stuff left over from when Cece moved. I just kind of soaked it in a bucket to get it wet and then uh, fed it to the worms. Um, I don't usually have problems with mold though, it's, it's really kind of strange. Okay, so here we are. We've made more room for the next feeding. So I'm kind of gonna backfill some of the bigger stuff to get it down there so that it gets a um, little bit more love. Things that are up high tend to get neglected a little bit. So anything that was like big food. Worms have done a great job. There's no smell or anything. Good worms. All right, so let me get them some new bedding. This is my prepared bedding. It's about 80% shredded cardboard and paper and about 20% coconut coir. I usually put a handful of um, either kelp meal or something like that in with some grit so that the bedding is ready to eat when the worms get to it. Okay, that's a good base. Then we'll get the food. Got an egg carton thing here. Put that in there. Oh, it looked, it's doing it again. All right, I guess I'm gonna leave it. So I tried growing my own sweet potato slips this year and um, it just now started, it's August. Um, I didn't scrub the potato really good. I think that might've been the problem. If you guys grow the, your own potato slips for sweet potatoes, put in the comments below how you do it. Um, but here we are August and I'm, I'm just now getting a slip. Too late, buddy, it's gonna be, winter is coming. Blue is going to get a stinky feeding here today. Um, had a bunch of my garlic seed, not seed, you know, these things. Um, went moldy on me. I didn't want to plant them and take a chance of um, not getting a garlic harvest. So the ones that went moldy, they're going in with the worms. I trimmed back my avocado trees, uh, roots, as well as the uh, leaves so that they can recover from being repotted before winter and also so they'll fit down here in the basement a little bit better. I'm going to cover those back up with more bedding. I think I'm going to give this part right here um, a little bit of a cover because it probably might still smell good to flies. So I'm gonna cover that up. So Blue had went probably a month and a half without food. Um, so you got a good feeding. This portion here is still gonna be um, very popular for quite a long time and then they can move on to this stuff. All right, so if you like this 55 gallon barrel bin, I have a playlist that you can watch right over here right now. And if you want to see the last time when we had the huge worm ball, I'll link that video right over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.